What's up y'all, Drew back again with Princess Craft RV. Today we are taking a look at the Soaring Eagle 6.5 XL by Adler Campers. What makes this unit slightly different than maybe any other truck camper that you have seen uh, is the, the simplicity of it. So what you have here is a little bit of everything that you need and not much of things that you don't need. So uh, starting right up front here, what you're gonna notice is uh, something a little different. These are going to utilize a kind of a ratchet strap or glorified ratchet strap uh, to aid in tying the camper down into your truck bed. It's going to use the uh, stake pocket holes or um, hook holes or whatnot. And what you can do is operate this exactly like a standard ratchet strap. So you'd find wherever different trucks are gonna be in different places, you hook here, and then you're gonna be able to pull the slack out like you normally would do with any sort of ratchet strap. So um, what, why that's different from a normal truck camper is usually uh, when you decide to make the purchase of a truck camper, you need to do quite a bit of outfitting on your truck to be able to accept uh, a slide-in truck camper. That is not the case with the Soaring Eagle, uh, ready to go here as far as the tie-downs. Uh, you don't even have to take the uh, bed of your, or excuse me, the tailgate on the truck off. So you slide this in and it is going to, you'll put the tail light, or excuse me, the tailgate up uh, on the rear. No reverse lights, no uh, brake lights on the unit itself. That's still going to be maintained through your truck. Uh, and other than that, it's very easy to accommodate. So on all four corners of the unit, a big feature is going to be the electric jacks. Uh, not generally something you are going to find on a camper of this size. Uh, biggest thing with that is these are gonna be remotely controlled. We'll have a uh, panel on the inside that we will have to wake up to link the remote and jack board. Uh, but other than that, super simple. One person can do it. Um, also, one thing to mention when we are looking at the Rico Titan jack system here, uh, when using the unit, if you do have any sort of power loss situation to either uh, single jack or all the jacks, you do have a manual drive option here up at the top. Uh, what that's going to accept is going to be a 3 8 socket wrench and extension. Uh, you should have that in your roadside tool bag regardless. Uh, what that's going to allow you to do is, again, in a power loss situation, you can uh, maneuver these jacks up or down to load or unload the camper as necessary. Uh, this particular unit was equipped with slide outs. Uh, so believe it or not, this unit will be accommodated on a dually or any larger size truck as well. Uh, or, you know, again, any smaller size truck, which is what it's designed for. Uh, moving right along here, we have our 30 amp power supply. Now this is our shop cord. Uh, when you buy the unit, it's going to come with a brand new uh, fancy cord. Uh, this one's been well loved, but is still working for us. So as you can see, it's only going to plug in one way. We have our receptacle here and one is notched in a way that it will only be accommodated one way. So we plug straight in. This is what they call a twist lock connection. So we give it an eighth inch turn to the right there. That's gonna go ahead and lock it in. We're then gonna have a secondary collar here that we will screw down, lock it in further, uh, keep somebody from potentially tripping over the cord or having to come uh, inadvertently disengage, kind of like it just did there. Uh, so with every camper that I uh, deliver or walk through, my one main uh, suggestion is going to be the addition of a 30 amp surge protector. Even with a camper uh, as minimalistic as this one here, there is still a tremendous amount of stuff going on throughout the camper electronically. Uh, with a inline surge protector is really the only effective way to manage our power supply going into the camper. Uh, as a lot of you know, RV parks in general are known to have kind of used and abused or substandard wiring. Uh, using again a onboard surge protector or a inline surge protector is going to be the only way to effectively pr protect your camper and the electronic components that are inside. Uh, I have a few products that I enjoy, uh, specific makers of surge protectors. Uh, if you have any questions, just contact our parts department. We would be more than happy to educate you on which product we think would be best for your specific unit. 
Now coming around here to the rear, uh, there's really not much to see back here. Uh, again, simplicity is the name of the game. We have a couple uh, 110 uh, GCI protected outlets. And that basically covers it for the uh, rear of the camper. And then not to, uh, not to uh, rob you of the view of the passenger side, uh, it's beautiful, 360 degrees, but there is not much going on from a functionality standpoint on this side. So very, very simple stuff. Um, that about covers it here for the exterior. We're going to hop on the inside and show you some stuff in there. All right, guys, here on the inside, uh, you know, for being such a small camper, it is very, very cozy in here and designed very well. Uh, starting up top here with the bed, uh, as you can see, it, it looks um, pretty small, almost like a single, uh, but very easily can transform into a full-size bed by pulling this forward. If we go ahead and fill out the sheets, you can see that's a king-size bed right there. So not only is uh, this unit going to be small in size, you're not going to be sacrificing the space you need uh, when you need to be most comfortable as you sleep. So an easy to stow away. If you have uh, more than a couple guests or you want separate sleeping quarters, you have some kids or whatever, the, the dinette here is also going to double as a bed. So if we get the remotes out of the way, we can see down here that this is, so there's nothing keeping this on. It's just like a, a tension thing. So if we go ahead and loosen it up a little bit, we can get rid of that tabletop for now. We're going to come down here into the, onto the pedestal, unscrew this coupler here. That's going to allow us to rotate that and get that out of the way. And then we're going to go back to our tabletop. We're going to slide that on. I think we're going to want to go this way with it. slide that there on the the rails that we have here and from there we can just take the rear cushions set them out over the table and there you go so if you had this pulled out somebody could easily sleep under there in kind of like a cool bunk bed uh, scenario so also above my head up here, we're going to have our Max fan from Dometic. It's going to come with the Max Air remote. Uh, when we go ahead and look at the remote, when we power the fan on, we're going to light up the display here. Now looking here at the remote, we have our set temperature. So that's going to be a thermostatic temperature that we can set. We'll see that here with the up or down arrows and how that changes. Now down here, that's going to be fan speed. That doesn't, doesn't necessarily correspond with the uh, thermostatic temperature. We can choose within 10% increments uh, just the amount of speed that we like. Uh, we can also uh, either uh, exhaust air out or we can reverse that fan to draw air in. We can um, close the vent here, still circulating air on the inside. And then we also have an auto button here, which is going to automatically set the temperature to 78 degrees. A uh, nice, easy one button that you can push to uh, get the unit running. The Max Air Fan is also equipped with a rain sensor. So if at any time during your trip, if it starts to rain, uh, that fan is going to automatically close, uh, keeping your unit dry on the inside. So with the dinette out of the way, uh, that is going to go ahead and expose the uh, battery compartment here. Uh, what we have in this particular unit is going to be two group 24 deep cycle lead acid batteries. Uh, now this unit can just about accommodate any battery um, size and combination that you would like to go with. It's also going to be equipped with a automatic lithium switchover uh, converter. And since lead acid and lithium have different charge rates, uh, that's not something you're going to have to worry about if at some point you do uh, decide to upgrade your unit to lithium. Uh, the converter, the wiring, everything is all set to go already. Quite a bit of stuff going on here on the side of the cabinetry. 
Uh, first off, we have a 110 volt uh, receptacle there. We also have our solar charge controller here. So the, this particular controller and most of the controllers that I've seen uh, are kind of very simple. There's not much that you can uh, control with them. It's kind of an always on system. It's gonna intake energy as necessary. That controller is smart enough to uh, not overcharge your battery. So once your batteries are in the full condition, uh, it will stop taking in energy. Uh, now, if we had the unit outside, we would kind of see this doing a little bit more. We would see some lights here indicating that it is charging, uh, taking in energy, things like that. If we want to know exactly where our battery voltage is, we can read that here, 13.6 indicating full for our battery type. If I hit that one more time, that would tell us how much, uh, excuse me, how many amps we're taking in via solar, as well as how many amp hours. And then below that, we have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style receptacle. We can go ahead and use that to power our onboard cooler fridge. Uh, we also have a couple USB chargers here as well. So moving to the other side of the cabinet here, we have our Rico Titan uh, jack board. Now this is what I had referenced earlier in the video. This is where we go to actually pair the remote. So if I go ahead and switch this on, that's gonna go ahead and uh, sync the remote and board there. And then if we're looking at the remote here, now orientation is gonna be from the rear. So this will be our driver side front jack, passenger side front jack, uh, driver side rear, passenger rear, or we can use these to activate the all four jacks at the same time. This is your main remote. It's going to run on batteries. Uh, if that battery goes dead, you will have a little cord here that you'll be able to plug into um, the, the, the board here as well as the top of the remote here. So if we remove this, we can go ahead and plug that in. Uh, now say you forgot your remote on your bumper. Uh, it's a sad day. We've lost this. We are going to have an emergency only remote, and this is going to allow us to still load and unload the camper electronically. Uh, however, this one does not have a battery and it is for wired operation only. Um, now coming down here to our switch panel, we can see that we have our uh, exterior lights, which is going to include a porch light at the rear. We also have our main ceiling light and then this light here is going to be uh, going to control the max fan that we had previously talked about. The reason why they have the switch here is that if you've, um, you know, you have your remote mounted in the bed uh, and then you kind of are going to leave the camper, if you forgot that you had the fan on and you wanted to go ahead and cut power to that, you could do, do so very easily with the switch. Now also here we have our converter. Again, this was also referenced. We have our lead acid and lithium auto tech converter. It's a WIFCO product. Uh, on the right side, we are gonna see our 12 volt uh, components and they are protected by a blade style automotive fuse. Uh, not a bad idea to pick up a variety pack, keep them with the unit in event that they do need to be changed. Uh, we then have our 110 volt uh, appliances here. These, those are going to be marked uh, in this particular unit. It's going to be your microwave, your receptacles, your air conditioner, things like that. So not a ton going on on the 110 side of things, uh, but uh, there nonetheless. So one thing you probably didn't expect to see in a unit of this size is going to be an onboard toilet. Of course, we still have it packaged in the box, uh, but you do have a space and a toilet is included with your purchase for those emergencies uh, situations at the campsite. The unit is also equipped with a Houghton brand AC um, that is going to be remotely controlled. Uh, very similar to the fan. You can see we have an on off button there. That's going to go ahead and power the unit on. And then if we come here over here to the mode button, we can switch between the mode. So that's going to be our air conditioner mode. That would be a dehumidifying option. It's gonna pull any moisture out of the air. Uh, that's gonna be fan only option. And then we have our heat strip. So that's going to be our heat option. Uh, we also have, uh, we can do Celsius, Fahrenheit. We can lock the remote. We can go ahead and dial our temperature up and down with this guy. We can choose our fan speed with this guy, or we can keep it on auto. If we keep it on auto, what's gonna happen is once we reach that thermostatic temperature, that fan's going to go ahead and kick it off. Uh, go ahead and kick off. Now, if we 
uh, keep it in one of these other selections here, the low, medium, or high, that fan is going to continue to run and circulate air regardless of what that thermostat temperature is set at. Uh, a couple other options here, you can set, uh, you know, you can set a set time, um, just like any other thermostat, have that kick on and off throughout the day as you'd like. Uh, you can set a timer, a sleep timer as well, and then you can go ahead and uh, change kind of some different things here about the display also. So right up top here above the microwave, we do have a little bit of netted storage. Um, kind of the only caveat to the unit is going to be there's obviously not a ton of storage. There's not a ton of excess space. We are talking about uh, minimalist use, uh, but you know, no, no space is wasted. So it's nice to see that above the microwave there. Uh, and then this is our high point microwave stainless steel front. Uh, really not much to speak of functionality wise. It, it's going to uh, operate, you know, just like any other microwave that you may have used in the past. Uh, one thing to note is you will see a glass uh, turntable tray in there. Now, I've never seen it myself, but I have heard uh, that those can break during travel, so it might not be a bad idea to pick that up, uh, take that out, maybe store it in a different location uh, that it's not going to be damaged. The reason why I love these Dometic coolers is it's a very versatile unit. Uh, it can run on 110 volt electricity when you are in the capacity of an RV park. Uh, with shore power and then it can also be used as a 12 volt appliance so uh, in it, within or without the camper so to speak so you can if you're say you're tailgating for the weekend or something like that camping uh, outside of your truck camper you can pull this thing out uh, plug it into the cigarette ladder uh, socket of your SUV or truck and we're going to have full functionality there uh, also what makes this a little different than a lot of the other units on the market is this can be dialed down to negative three degrees. So you could operate this whole compartment as a deep freeze uh, or a refrigerator or a fridge freezer combo. So depending on the temperature you set here, uh, this compartment is going to correspond with that uh, as you would expect. Now, when it comes to operation here, if I go ahead and power the unit on, we'll see that it lit up just fine. 61 degrees is indicating the internal temperature or the real time temperature of the unit. If we would want to change that, we're just going to go ahead and tap this set button. That's gonna tell you where it's set at. So it's set at 36 degrees now. And if we want to change that, we will push that set button and adjust those up or down with the plus arrows there. All right, guys, that just about covers the walkthrough here of the Soaring Eagle 6.5 XL by Adler Campers. Uh, this is a fine unit, very uh, quality product. Um, I appreciate you guys. If you made it to the end, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. It's been a little bit uh, since we've done a tech tour walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.